All right, how y'all doing? I know we're in Austin, Texas, but I gotta, I gotta give it up for all my Red Raiders. <laughs> if someone would have told five-year-old Jonathan Grant to imagine what the future would bring, he would have never imagined that he would grow up to be the Jonathan Brown that you all see today. Through the eyes of a five-year-old, life was so much more real than it should have ever been. Having to think about where my next meal was coming from, whose house I would be living in, forced me to develop a strong imperative to fight for survival. It was the little things in life that other five-year-olds took for granted that I wanted so much. Hot food on the table, a stable place to live, and a real mom and dad. As I got older, the struggles of everyday life became more obvious to me and the people around me. You would think that a 250-pound high school senior would know his own voice. Well, that wasn't always true for me. I am a 14-year veteran of foster care. I say veteran because in November of last year, the family that I was with for the past eight years adopted me. I tell you this all because it, was, it wasn't the, the first time I had ever said anything about myself being in foster care to anyone outside of the system was when I did a speech in front of the Clean Independent School Council for AVID. Um, most of my life I've lived two lives. It was hard enough to give a speech in, uh, in front of the school council and the superintendent of my school district, but uh, to tell the life story to someone that I didn't even know was almost devastating. Everyone at home, wherever that may have been, knew that I was a foster child. And my biological didn't, mother didn't want me. She said, Jonathan has become much more of a burden for me, and I feel that his life will be better lived and afforded in foster care. I got to read that when I was nine years old. But still, I could never find the guts or the courage to tell the other kids why my mother didn't want me or why I never knew my father. So I just lied. I told him things like, he's my stepdad, and my parents have a really important traveling job, so I'm just staying with my aunt and uncle for a while. Even my friends here today are hearing this for the first time. Because of these lies to the outside world, I was the who and whatever, or whatever, I wanted to be. But the who and the what I chose to be wasn't the makings of a great and wonderful person, but was the foundation of a three-strike drug felon with a long crime record that was about to catch up to him. I got in fights in school, in church, and at home. I stole from every, sto every, every store every chance I got, but I never stole anything I didn't really need. I lied and I cheated. I swore on everything, and I hurt everyone that I met before they can hurt me. At the age of 12, I knew that I had no mom and dad, so no one could tell me what to do. And with this self-worth, I tried everything short of killing myself to get out. As I grew up, things got worse. I went from psychiatrist to psychologist, taking medication to medication, and nothing seemed to work, so I didn't care. But when I got into high school, things started to matter. Not all at once, but things like, what am I gonna do when I turn 18 and the state drops me like I never exist? Or uh, where am I gonna go when these people kick me out of their home? Halfway through my freshman year of high school, I was introduced to this program called AVID. <laughs> and get this, one of my teachers nominated me. I applied, was interviewed, and I got accepted. So it was really a surprise to me. Now the biggest question asked to every AVID student is, why are you an AVID and what has AVID done for you? Well, before AVID, I was an uneducated, undetermined, self-centered ninth grader with the potential to do many things and a voice of a two-year-old. I let everyone walk over me 
and I stopped no one from pushing me down. Now I am an open-minded, fun-loving, intelligent high school graduate, college attendee. with the attitude of, no one can stop me now. In the AVID class, we worked on team building skills, worked on writing skills, um, developed and completed everything we needed for su success in college. These skills gained in AVID allowed me the co to gain the confidence to succeed as a student and as a member of society. In fact, within just a few semesters, within the first semester of AVID, I pulled my grades up from Ds and Cs and mostly Fs to all As and Bs. I signed, I signed up for pre-AP and AP classes, made many new friends, and for the first time in my life, had a 100% safe place to come and talk to someone. All thanks to my avid family and my avid mom, Ms. Tolman. I have found my voice and I have found myself. If every teacher could be modeled after anyone in the world, they should all be modeled after Ms. Tolman. I have known Ms. Tolman since the seventh grade. And to this day, there has not been a single individual who has affected my life in so many positive ways she was the first one to see through my outer troubled shell. <laughs> to help me discover that there is more to life than what I knew in those days. She has instilled in me the drive to succeed in every aspect of life and has been my safety net every time I have fallen. Having a teacher in my life like her has provided me with the courage to fight through all the downfalls and rise above. But the thing that makes Ms. Tallman so wonderful is the fact that she cares with her actions and not just with her words. She has this way of fixing everything all at once. It is amazing how she is always in the room whenever I had a problem or just needed someone to talk to. She has done so much to help me to have the best future, and for that, I will always be grateful. No longer will I be pushed around from home to home, left without a purpose or left without a voice. The voice you hear now is the voice of Jonathan Grant Brown. A college-bound student built with the skills and knowledge and the drive for success. Thank you.